Welcome to Bite Size Dental Marketing. Today I have Hannah with me. Hannah, thanks for jumping on. Thanks for having me, Eric. It's always a pleasure. Hannah, let's talk about the top three things that make a perfect dental office review. I love that topic, Eric. Um, Google reviews hold a lot of weight. Um, it's That is how a lot of patients choose a practice. That's how patients and people choose doctors and uh, restaurants. So, but it's more than that. Um, but I'll get into that now. Um, what do you think the top three things are that make a perfect Google review? I think the first one is it needs to be five stars. Yeah, you know that. That's <laughs> and it needs to be important. on Google. I think that one is. Those two are are very obvious. Thank you. Super, super obvious. I'm gonna I'm gonna call them the same though because they're so obvious. Okay. All right, and I think the next one for me is, I think that the review has to be written and have specific details about the practice or the doctor or the treatment or the team. Yeah. I, I don't want just had a great visit five star. I want, I had a great visit. I saw Dr. Majors and she's amazing. I, you know, she's trying to save this tooth that I've been worried about. Alexa, the hygienist was great. She, you know, made sure that my teeth are clean and I feel like they're always on my side. Like I want specifics in the review. So that's actually something I would like to make a note on as well. That's super important. And it's not just super important because people actually do read reviews and they want to hear about the practice and hear about what makes it great or what makes it not great. And that's not the only thing that's important because guess what? When you search for something on Google, Google uses keywords from Google reviews to help rank mm -hmm. a practice's Google business profile and website. So for example, if I were to leave a Google review for a dentist and I would say something like, normally I have a lot of anxiety when I go to the dentist. Um, but honestly, I can say Dr. Majors was the best dentist I've ever seen. She made me feel so comfortable at ease, um, no pain. And those are the words that someone's going to search for. They're going to search for best dentist. They're going to search for no anxiety dentist. They're going to search for um, no pain dentist. These are those are all those are three keywords. If someone left a review like that, it would be fire, because mm -hmm. as soon as someone typed one of those things into Google, um, there that practice would be pulled up to rank first. Yeah, I, we've seen Google invest a lot of technology in ensuring that reviews are well appointed from a fairness standpoint. And, you know, Ian and I were talking the other day about so many companies promise that they can get rid of one stars and you really can't unless it's an ex-employee or someone who has, you know, some bad blood, with the obvious bad blood with the practice. But yeah, I think that Google has has shown that they've invested technology in ensuring that reviews are fair. And in doing so, I think they're putting a lot of weight behind them because I think it's that I think it's user generated content. And yeah. I think that that's what they're valuing right now. And I, I agree. I think the more specific of review and the more best in us, the more, the more of those keywords are said, the more that you're going to rank when it, uh, it's searched. It's kind of like, sorry, it's kind of like crowdsourcing for SEO, if that mm. makes sense. So normally like an SEO person like myself would go in and I would create the content um, like you said, that it's user generated content, it's it's crowdsourcing, the more people that contribute, they build up the authority and trust of that brand. So that's why reviews hold so much weight. And, mm -hmm. um, and another note on that is um, the importance of responding to mm -hmm. reviews. Is um, that your number is, three? That is that is the number three. That is the number three. I like um, it top things that make a, a Google review perfect. Uh, responding to reviews, not only it's, it's kind of, if you know anything about Instagram, 
you know that the algorithm is fueled by not only people actually commenting on a photo, but the person who posted the photo responded to those comments. Google business profile is the same. If you're getting a review, it's kind of like a comment. And if you respond to that, it's the same thing. Google sees you're active. It sees that you're interacting with your um, patients in this case, and it's going to uh, immediately give your Google business profile more trust and more authority in, in terms of ranking. Yeah, I have done a short on how to respond to reviews. I think responding to positive reviews is easy. Oh my gosh, Hannah, it was so wonderful to see you. Thanks so much for the kind words. Looking forward to seeing mm -hmm. you soon. I think anything, I think an easy response is easy. I think the, you know, I got a bad review response. That's a whole different thing. But, but I, uh, I think for me, the, the reason I, I, you nailed it, responding to reviews is not just about responding to the person. I think more importantly, it's responding to the next hundred or 200 or a thousand exactly. or 10,000 people who read the reviews. It's um, reputation management. It, it really is. And it's showing that yeah. you're engaged. Yeah. Yeah. And it's showing that you actually care um, what that person had to say. You know, I've, I've gone in and seen a, a bad review where the owner of whatever the business was responded really like with hostile towards the person who left yep. the review. And that is the worst thing you can do. If you, if there is just a, a tiny smidge of negativity, passive aggressiveness, anything, when you respond to a negative review, you are ultimately immediately putting a bad taste in the person's mouth who yep. would have and, seen and that. Because I agree. I, when I come in and I see a review that the they've responded to harshly the office. I immediately contemplate like how emotionally mature are they? Like you're mm -hmm. in the business of people of, and, and maybe that person had a bad day. You don't, you shouldn't change your behavior because they had a bad day. I think, mm -hmm. I think when a bad review gets left and every office gets them at some point, right on online on time frame, it just, just the number of people there they see in the, the number of bad days that are going to happen. I think it needs to be Hannah. I'm so sorry you had an experience. We're typically known for a great experience. Please contact Eric at this phone number and we'll work through the details. I don't think you should get into trying to prove how you're right and Hannah's wrong. Hey, we disagree with some facts on this interview. I, I, that, oh, okay. Not interview. I would, I, I would also feel comfortable saying this, Hannah, we are sorry you had a bad experience while we're going to disagree with some of the merits of this review. We would love for you to call us. And let's talk about it and work it out because yeah. to me that signifies both. I'm not accepting the review at face value. I'm not apologizing. I am apologizing. You had a bad experience, which I would yeah. like to, 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 to create, but more importantly mm -hmm. for the next thousand people that read it, I'm showing that I was willing to have a conversation with you about it. Yeah. And I on that note, yeah, Go ahead. I, I agree. On that note, another important thing you would want to include and in, in, in the wording of that is you would want to make sure you leave, you put the phone number in the response as well. Hey, give mm -hmm. us a call at this and ask for Susan. You I want to give part. them a point of contact because if, if there's ambiguity and they have to call and they first, they have to go look up your number, then they have to call and they don't even know who to ask to speak to. And what are they going to say? Oh, I left a bad review and now I want to talk about it. it. That's you have to give them clear instructions and let them know that if they ask for this person, that person will be expecting their call and they will be happy to discuss it with them. And I think that's a wonderful ending point. Love the glasses. And that was your bite of dental marketing for the day.